Okay, we're going to continue on now with our fifth lecture for on the endocrine system. And now finally, we're going to start talking about some actual endocrine glands and the hormones they produce and what those hormones do. Now, our next lecture is actually going to be about the pituitary gland and the hypothalamus and their very intimate relationship. They have a very intimate relationship with each other. They're located uh, next to each other. And um, as you guys see, my computer is going to act up on me here again, so hang on just for a second. All right, sorry about that. I must have a poltergeist in my office or something. But um, um, the pituitary, the hypothalamus, are, of course, located very close to each other. They're on the um, middle underside portion of the brain, and um, they very much do have an intimate relationship. And one of the things I do want you guys to realize, because you guys will hear this, the pituitary is sometimes called your master gland. Now, my stylist doesn't want to write. Nothing wants to work for me today. All right. I feel like I'm writing like an eight-year-old. Pituitary is often called the master gland, endocrine gland of the body. And then the hypothalamus is sometimes called the master of the master. Because as we'll see, um, the pituitary secretes a number of hormones that are only made if the hypothalamus secretes certain hormones. So remember on the last lecture we talked about what actually triggers an endocrine gland to produce a particular hormone, and one of those was hormonal control. So we'll certainly see some examples of that here as we talk about the hypothalamus and the pituitary. All right, so hopefully you guys remember from when you studied the nervous system in Biology 201, the hypothalamus is located on the inferior medial portion of the brain, right in there. Um, the hypothalamus consists of groups of neurons, and they actually compose or form portions of the walls of the third ventricle, one of those fluid-filled spaces in the brain. And the hypothalamus is very close to a little tiny bean-shaped gland called the pituitary gland. And the hypothalamus and the pituitary are connected by a thin stalk, which you may or may not have learned about in Biology 201. That little stalk there is called the infundibulum. which we'll be revisiting over on the anatomy side as well. Now, the pituitary itself, now this is something you, you may not have seen before. It's actually divided into two major sections or lobes, and one of those is called the posterior lobe. That's over here, or posterior pituitary is what we usually call it. And then the more anterior section is called the anterior pituitary or the anterior lobe. There are also a couple of other terms that are used for it. The pituitary gland as a whole is sometimes called the hypophysis or hypophysis, um, and sometimes it's called the hypophysis cerebri, uh, referring to its location there on the underside of the cerebrum of the brain. Um, then the posterior pituitary is sometimes called the neurohypophysis. Neuro referring to the nervous system, nervous tissue, and the reason it's called that is because this section of the pituitary back there is actually composed of nervous tissue or neural tissue. The anterior pituitary is sometimes called the adeno hypothesis. And adeno is a prefix that you'll see every once in a while, and it refers to glandular type tissue or something that secretes or produces something. So you will see that from time to time as well. So as with a lot of things in biology, um, and it seems like especially anatomy, there are multiple names for, for different things. Okay, now this diagram um, is illustrating some of the blood vessels and so forth that connect the hypothalamus and the two sections of the pituitary. So we're zooming in. Here's the hypothalamus up here. And the hypothalamus is part of the brain itself. So the cells 
that uh, compose the hypothalamus are actually neurons. There are different clusters of neurons within the hypothalamus that have different jobs. The hypothalamus is a pretty complex structure. Hopefully you learned about that in AMP1, involved in all types of things from regulating many aspects of um, homeostasis to being involved in our emotions. So the hypothalamus, those neurons that are located in there have lots and lots of different jobs. And then down here you have your pituitary. So here's your anterior section, here's your posterior section. And um, then you got lots of blood vessels that are passing uh, between the two. And the ones that actually flow through the uh, infundibulum, the stalk right in there, are sometimes called the portal vessels in this area. And what they're going to do, those portal vessels, are going to carry hormones that are made by neurons up here in the hypothalamus. They get secreted, so out of those neurons, they enter into the tissue fluids that surround those neurons, and then they're very quickly picked up by these capillaries, these small blood vessels there um, that are adjacent to those, to those tissues and are also surrounded by the fluids. So they enter those blood vessels and they wind up traveling the short distance down here to the anterior pituitary. Those hormones that are made by the hypothalamus can diffuse out, and now they're going to influence the cells that are located there in the anterior pituitary. Let me erase this messy drawing I've got going on here. Now what about the posterior pituitary section over here? So this is a little bit different. So you have some other groups of neurons up here in the hypothalamus, and they're neurons, so they have, make my pen thicker here, so they have axons that extend from their cell bodies through the infundibulum and over here into the posterior section of the pituitary. So that's why when we said the posterior pituitary is composed of nervous tissue, it's because you have all these axons of neurons that are actually physically located up in the hypothalamus. Those axons extend down into the posterior pituitary and make up most, most of the tissue there. All right, so these neurons up here whose cell bodies are actually located up in the hypothalamus, they are hormone producers. They produce a couple of different hormones that we'll talk about. Those hormones travel down their axons and they get secreted out of, remember your synaptic knobs that you have on the ends of axons, those hormones get secreted out of those synaptic knobs, and, but the location of the secretion is down there in the posterior pituitary. So the posterior pituitary is almost like an extension of the hypothalamus. The anterior pituitary, though, consists of glandular type tissue, which you may remember from Biology 201 is, is a special type of epithelial tissue where you have cells that produce and secrete hormones. All right, so a little bit more information here about the posterior pituitary. So again, the posterior pituitary is more or less, it's like an extension of the hypothalamus itself. You have a neural connection to the hypothalamus. That's sometimes called the hypothalamic hypophyseal tract. Um, now here where it says nuclei of the hypothalamus, synthesize neurohormones. So neurohormones are hormones that are produced by neurons um, or produced in the nervous system. Produces a couple of types of hormones, oxytocin, and then there's another hormone called antidiuretic hormone or ADH, which you may have heard a little bit about that in biology 201 as well. So those are the two hormones that are produced in the hypothalamus and then they travel down the axons of the neurons that made them, and then they're actually stored down in those little synaptic knobs, which are physically located in the posterior portion of the pituitary. And then when needed, they get secreted. They're secreted in the posterior pituitary tissues. All right, so that is our pituitary hypothalamic relationship between um, a portion of the hypothalamus and the posterior pituitary. Oh, I circled this up here, nuclei of 
the hypothalamus. Remember, nucleus is a word that gets used in different ways in biology. So you can have the nucleus of an atom. You can have the nucleus of a cell where the DNA is located. And here, nuclei is referring to a cluster of neuron cell bodies. Okay, so in the central, in the nervous system, when you hear nucleus, that's what that's referring to, like a cluster of gray matter or a cluster of cell bodies of neurons that are involved with some particular function. Okay, here's a really nice diagram from your textbook, which is showing some of what I just talked about in a different way. Um, and don't worry about the name, like here, they're showing you paraventricular nucleus. Okay, so that is a cluster, it's not just two, they're showing you two example neurons that are in there. And um, so you, you have a cluster of neurons in one area that produce the hormone called oxytocin, and then you have another cluster of neurons that form what's called the supraoptic nucleus. Now, you know, that's one of the nice things. Once you start becoming familiar with terminology and biology, you can start to figure out what, uh, how some of these things were named, like supraoptic. Supra refers to superior. Optic is referring to the optic nerve. So this little cluster of cell bodies is superior to the where the optic nerves would be located. All right, so you don't have to worry about the names of those nuclei of neurons. Just know that you do have clusters of neurons that up there in the hypothalamus that make oxytocin. And then you have another cluster that makes antidiuretic hormone. And then those hormones travel down the axons, as I mentioned earlier, and they're actually stored down here in the posterior pituitary they get secreted when those hormones need to be secreted. And then notice you've got blood vessels down in here as well. So when those hormones get secreted, they enter into the surrounding tissue fluids and they're very quickly picked up by those blood vessels because fluids move from compartment to compartment. And then uh, those hormones are going to be carried away by the bloodstream and they're going to travel all throughout the body where they can go off and find their target tissues that they're supposed to act on. So get used to seeing when you're looking at diagrams of endocrine glands, you're always gonna see lots of blood vessels around because you gotta have lots of blood vessels around to pick up these hormones that are being produced by the glands very, very quickly so they can be transported throughout the body. And in fact, some of you guys may have been able to, um, if you took a face-to-face -face, uh, anatomy class, you might have been able to dissect a sheep brain. Um, that's one of the things we typically do in our face-to-face -face classes. And one of the coolest things to look at on a sheep brain, sheep brains are not very big, by the way. They're about like that, and, which not too surprising because sheep are not all that bright. But one of the coolest things to see on the sheep brain is the pituitary gland because it is buried in a mass of capillaries. And these, this capillary mass has a brown, spongy, type consistency and so you can really see it's way more dramatic than what you see on the diagrams in your textbook. You really have this spongy mass of tons and tons and tons of tiny microscopic blood vessels that very quickly absorb those hormones that are made by endocrine glands. Alright, so that's how the posterior pituitary um, has its intimate relationship with the hypothalamus. How about the anterior pituitary? Um, Alright, so you have blood vessels that pick up the hormones that are produced by some of the neurons up in the hypothalamus. Those hormones get secreted up in the hypothalamus area rather than down in the posterior pituitary area. Um, they enter into blood vessels. Those blood vessels then transport those hormones down to the anterior pituitary tissues they exit the blood vessels and they're able to influence what's going on in the anterior pituitary. Okay, so this little system of blood vessels that is involved in picking up these hormones made in the hypothalamus and carrying them down to the anterior pituitary is called the hypophyseal portal system. And um, it consists of a primary capillary 
plexus. Plexus is like a network. You can have a plexus of, of nerves, for example, in your nervous system. That's like a network of um, many different nerves that are intersecting with each other. Same thing with blood vessels. Um, and if they're microscopic blood vessels, you're going to refer to that as a capillary plexus. Uh, that connects into the hypophyseal portal veins. Veins carry blood away from tissues, generally, and back toward the heart. It's on its way back to the heart. We'll learn about that when we move into the next unit. Um, then that blood enters the secondary capillary plexus, which is a capillary bed that surrounds the anterior pituitary. Um, and the hormones that are made by the hypothalamus that are going to travel through this, this little microscopic system of blood vessels, they're called releasing and inhibiting hormones. Most of them are releasing hormones, as we'll see. We're going to hear that terminology more than once. So here's a nice diagram from your textbook, which is showing you it's easier to see it than just hearing me talk about it. But as I mentioned, so you've got clusters of neurons up here in the hypothalamus that produce various releasing and inhibiting hormones. So you can see their names there. GHRH, for example, means growth hormone releasing hormone. GHIH means growth hormone inhibiting hormone. Um, and then we'll, we'll be talking about those and the others as well. They enter this primary capillary plexus when they're secreted. Again, that's a capillary, a wad of capillaries um, located in that area of the hypothalamus. They move from there into these hypophyseal portal veins, which are now transporting, carrying those releasing and inhibiting hormones. Then those blood vessels connect to what's called the secondary capillary plexus. That's a big capillary bed surrounding the anterior pituitary. And now those releasing and inhibiting hormones are able to exit out of the secondary capillary plexus and influence the cells in here, the glandular tissues that make your anterior pituitary hormones. So over here, what you're seeing, those are abbreviations for various hormones that are made by the anterior pituitary. And we'll be talking about all of those as well. So those include things like GH, that stands for growth hormone. Um, LH stands for luteinizing hormone. PRL stands for prolactin, so we'll be uh, hearing about what those hormones do as we move through this particular unit. Okay, so that's just kind of a, an overview of how the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland are connected with each other. And so the next uh, couple of lectures, we're going to talk in more detail about these various hormones that are secreted out of the pituitary gland and the effects that they have on the body. So for the next video lecture, we'll uh, discuss the posterior pituitary hormones, otherwise known as oxytocin and antidiuretic hormone.